Hello everybody, good afternoon and a warm welcome to this afternoon's webinar on the Pensions Data Exchange in Sage 50 Payroll. My name's Alice and I'm co-presenting this webinar alongside my colleague Duncan. And a little look at what we're going to cover as well. So I'll begin with setting up PDX. So we'll look at what the Pensions Data Exchange is. And then Duncan will come back to cover importing pension updates and sending your pension data as well directly to your pension provider. And then last but not least, I'll have a troubleshooting section. So there's some handy top tips there from us. Um, and of course, we'll finish with some further support just at the end as well. So firstly, setting up PDX. So what is the Pension Data Exchange? Well, it allows you to send and receive pension data directly with three compatible pension providers. And these are Nest, the People's Pension and Smart Pensions. Today we're covering an example with Nest, but the setup process for the other two pension providers is largely similar. And something to note as well, if you aren't with these providers, you can still use the pensions module without PDX enabled, um, and you can instead export CSV files and upload those to your provider's portal instead. But just a reminder, today we're um, showing an example with Nest, and PDX is only compatible with Nest, the People's Pension, and Smart Pensions. Before you begin to use PDX, all you do need to set it up, and there's a few things that you'll need to check before that actual setup process. So you need to have the pensions module and also PDX activated. And if you're unsure where the, whether this is activated or not, just go into your pensions module settings, which you can find in your company tasks. In here, you'll have a button highlighted on the right image here called Set Up Pensions Data Exchange. If you've got that button there, that means PDX is activated. If you don't have that button, you'll need to contact our technical support in order to use the PDX function. You'll also need your Sage account login details to hand. And as mentioned, your pension provider needs to be one of those three compatible ones. You also need to have your pension provider's login details to hand as well, so make a note of these. And last thing, only applies to, you, to those of you who do use Nest, but you'll need to make sure your pension groups are set up to align to the tax periods. If they're not, that's something that Nest are able to help with, as you will need to set up some new groups which do align to the tax periods. But they're the main things there that you'll need in order to set up PDX nice and easily. And once you've got these things and you're ready to go, that's when you can begin that setup process. So I've made a flow chart here representing the steps of the setup. But what PDX does is connect Sage to your pension provider directly so both sides can communicate with each other to send and receive information. Looks like quite a few steps, but it is nice and straightforward to do. Now for this webinar, we have already set up PDX ready for Duncan's demonstrations a little bit later, but we did capture this whole process and I've made a video of it so I can still show the demo to you all. So I'm just going to bring up this video and I'll explain those setup steps as I go. So that should be on your screen right now. But there are two stages of the setup for PDX. Step one is to register and set up PDX. Then step two is to sign in and update Sage 50 payroll. Now, before you do this, just a reminder to have your Sage account and pension account login details on hand because you will need to log in to both of those and also to take a backup of your payroll data before you make any changes. You're then going to go to your pensions module settings, which you'll find in your company tasks. So I'll just open that up and you can see just at the bottom there that button to say set up a pension data exchange. And just a reminder, you will only have that button if you've got PDX activated. I'll click on this button little bit of information about PDX as well with those three providers and all I need to do in here is click next in the bottom right. You'll then see these two setup steps that I mentioned with do it now buttons and tick boxes on the right and notice as well in the bottom right corner the next buttons are completely greyed out so it won't let you advance onto the next step until these first two setup steps are complete. So let's do those now. I'm first of all going to click on step one. So I'm going to click on do it now. 
and that will bring up this login window. So this is where you'll need to enter your Sage account details. So your email and password. I'll just put those in. And once you're logged in, you'll have a new window come up, which is the Pensions Data Exchange Management Centre. So this is where that connection happens between Sage and your pension provider. We can see my company is selected here. So this is actually the name of my company in payroll. We've got that tick box there. And all I need to do now is just click confirm. We've got a welcome page here for the management center as well. So welcome tab, we've got a manage pension accounts tab and manage access. I'm gonna go ahead and click that manage pension accounts tab. So this is where you'll add your provider account. Remember those three compatible uh, providers. In my case, that's going to be Nest. So I just need to click on Nest and proceed with that next step. This window now asks you to log in with your provider's details. So first of all, at the top, you've got a description for the account. So this is what you wanted to show us on the management center. You also need your Nest employer ID. So if you're unsure what this is, Nest can provide this for you. And lastly, just the email and password that you would log into your online portal with. So this is your login for your actual Nest uh, pension portal. And once you've entered these, you'll just need to click save in the bottom right. You'll get confirmation that you've added details of your pension account, along with some next steps as well. So for now, I'll just click close and we'll move on with that setup. So we can see now that we've added our account, we've logged in, we've now got something processing and loading in here. And what that's doing is pulling through your pension scheme details from Nest or from your provider. This can take a few moments. It just depends um, on multiple things like your internet speed and things. Um, but once it does load, you'll have a bit more information pull through in this table. And this is actually detailing your pension schemes. So we can see the scheme description the scheme reference as well from Nest, the employee contributions and the employer contributions as well. All I need to do now is assign my company. So assign a company to this scheme. You'll see it's got a little red box around it as well. And actually, if you hover over that red box, you'll see it actually gives a bit of detail why it's in red. So just lets you know that you'll need to click to assign a pension scheme. Um, sorry, a pension payroll company to the pension scheme. So we'll click on that. And this is now the window where you'll assign that scheme. So one important thing in here is this box, which will ask you to enter a date that you last successfully submitted or uploaded information to your provider. So for example, let's say I already had sent all of May's pension data to Nest. I would need to enter the date, the process date and payroll of that last successful submission in May. So I would enter that in this box and that would stop the send pension data option in payroll pulling through loads of historical information that you've already sent. Now, alternatively, if you're a new company like mine and you've not yet made any submissions to your pension provider, you can just leave this box blank. That will ensure all of the pension data will pull through and send pension data, which Duncan will be showing you shortly. I'm then just going to select my company to link the scheme to at the bottom, which is the pensions module PDX, and then click OK. And then same again with my next scheme that's pulled through. So again, I'm going to leave this date box blank because I've not actually sent anything across to my provider just yet. I'm going to select my company, which one I want to link it to at the bottom, and then click OK. And that is step one done. So we've registered our company. We've set up PDX on the management center, which is this. And we can take that little box next to step one. So next step there is to sign in and update Sage 50 payroll. So to do this, I'm going to click do it now on step two. And you'll get this window just to kind of authenticate and log into your Sage account again. So again, this is the email and password for your Sage account. 
we'll just pop this in. And it's going to be a case of matching up your schemes in payroll after this. So this is back in payroll. I'm going to click login and we can see this loading bar going across while it's retrieving that information from the management center. Again, this can take a few moments, but it's pulling that through from the management center. And once it's loaded, we can see those two schemes coming through. So you've got those two pension schemes and they're ready to be matched to the pension scheme in payroll. For this, it's just going to be a case of selecting the scheme in the top left, moving across and selecting the payroll pension scheme to match it to, and then just clicking match scheme at the bottom. So that's one scheme matched. I'm just going to do the same with my monthly scheme as well. So again, I'll select that, move across and select the payroll pension scheme I'd like to match it to and click on match scheme. I'm just going to confirm those details in the bottom. Do check these over and you'll just then need to click next in the bottom right. After this, it does ask you to choose a default scheme. Um, you'll just see on the right hand side there, it's got a little red ring around it. Remember, if you hover over that, it will provide more detail. Um, but it doesn't really matter which one you select here. I always advise choosing the one with the most employees, though. So I'm just going to select my weekly pay as default. And then click save in the bottom right. You are prompted to take a backup at this point as well. So I'm going to click save and then yes to take that back up and just work through the wizard. Always a good top tip as well, just to name your backups appropriately. So in this case, I'm calling it PDX Setup. So I know exactly what that backup is. And I'll just click Next and Finish. As I've done that backup, I can now click Finish in the bottom right. And that is step two complete. So I can now tick that box next to step two. Click the Next button in the bottom right. And we've got a nice little message there to say you're all done. You're now ready to use Pensions Data Exchange to send and receive pension information. You've also got a link to the Help Centre there if you want to read a little bit more about it uh, before you begin. But I'm just going to click Finish in the bottom right. And then save those pensions module settings. So that was just Finish in the bottom right. I'll click Save there. And that is PDX all set up. So I just want to pop back to the slides and have a little bit of a recap. I'm um, just using that flow chart which I had. Um, so to set up PDX, you're first going to use your Sage login to go onto PDX and register your company. You'll then remember we could select our provider. So we clicked on Nest and logged into our Nest account to then pull through those pension scheme details to PDX. We could then assign the payroll company to the scheme and then come back to payroll to match that scheme to your pension scheme in payroll. So this flowchart does show both of the steps combined, but overall we can see that PDX is what connects Sage to your pension provider, ultimately allowing them to communicate with each other and make sending and receiving pension data that much quicker and easier. But that does bring us to the end of the setup. It is now time to pass over to Duncan, who's going to take you through the next sections of the webinar. So it's over to you, Duncan. Thank you so much, Alice. So once you've got Pensions Data Exchange or PDX set up, that then can be built into your payroll process. And um, there are two elements to PDX. There's importing pension updates from your provider. And then the main element is sending the pension data back to them. So just to explain briefly where that all fits into your payroll process and an easy way to remember the order of things is to refer to the, the process map or the tasks in your payroll tasks in the order that they are listed. So right at the start of a pay run, um, once you've set up PDX, you have the option of importing things like um, opt out details or any scheme changes from your provider into payroll. Uh, you would then run your payroll process as usual. 
So entering the payments, running a pension assessment and updating the records. And then towards the end of the pay run is when you would send pension data to your provider. So I have got a video of sending the pension data, but I'm just going to talk briefly first about importing pension updates. Now, the exact functionality will depend on which provider you're with, but using Nest as an example, as it is quite a popular provider, uh, with Nest, um, you do have the option of importing um, opt-out details. I should say opt-out on that slide rather than out-opt from your pension provider. So um, on the import data tab, it will show you any opt-outs that have been processed by Nest, and that just automatically populates the opt-out date into your pension assessment screen. Uh, the other changes that can be made are if the scheme's default contributions have changed. And this is something that happened historically when the, the phased introduction of the minimum contributions came in. Uh, you can sync any changes that have been made at the provider's end with your pension scheme in SAGE. And if you do add any new groups, for example, or additional pension schemes with your provider, uh, they can then be matched to a pension scheme in payroll. And, and it will show you any updates when you run that option. So you can read more about um, how this feature works by following the link in the slide, but that is your pre-update task uh, at the start of the pay run. Now, fast forward towards the end of your pay run, um, that is when you would send your pension data. And specifically, uh, we're talking about enrollment information. So new members that have been auto-enrolled or have opted in to the pension scheme uh, and the contributions that your scheme members are making, both the employee and the employer contribution. And some providers will also include um, cancellations or, or opt-outs, cessations, sometimes known as, uh, in the data that is sent back to the provider. So um, what I want to do for this section is to uh, run you through a video of the steps to send the pension data. So I'm just going to bring that up on screen and I will talk you through how it all works. So in the video, we're going to take you through the three main steps, running the pension assessment, updating the records, and then sending the data to the provider. So it is important that you run your pension assessment um, as part of your pay run, because what this will do is it will identify anyone that needs to be auto-enrolled, and the process of enrolling them through your assessment will cause the data for the enrollment to be included in your data that you're sending. And it's Done in the usual way, so it's just after the enter payment screen. Uh, you'd be prompted to take a backup. So if you don't have a recent backup, we'd always suggest doing one at that point. And that will then take you into your pension assessment screen. Now, in this particular demo, this is actually the first assessment that we've done for a new company. And we've got three employees that are eligible and are being enrolled into the pension scheme. So by running this pension assessment and auto-enrolling them this way, it's going to create both enrollment and contribution files for them. So once you've run the pension assessment, you would close out of that. You'd run your pre-update reports, payslips, etc. And then um, before you can think about update, uh, sending your pension data, you will need to update your records. The send pension data always uses historical information, updated information in what it sends to your provider. So uh, once you've done your assessment, you've checked all your pre-update reports, you will need to update the records just to confirm those values, uh, including the contributions that are being made at this period. So nothing you'd do differently during the update records process, you would just run through that wizard in the usual way. And then from that point, you are ready to send the pension data. So that's the next step we're going to show you um, in this demo. So you can see it there in the payroll tasks. And we've actually shortened this process very slightly for the video because it will need to make a connection to your pension provider. So in the background, it's going through some authentication. It's communicating with your pension provider. And after a wait of perhaps up to 30 seconds or so, uh, you will see this screen where you'll have the information that is ready to send. Now, with this one being the very first time we're sending pension data to this provider uh, and, and with the provider being Nest, uh, we will need to fill in 
the group and the payment source that applies to each employee. Now you'll be able to select these from the drop down because uh, PDX already knows what your group names are and your payment sources are because you've linked your provider account, but it doesn't know what group and payment source should be associated with each employee. So if there was just one new employee that you're enrolling, for example, that needed a group and source selected, you could do it individually, as it's shown you there in the video. Um, but if you have several employees that are all in the same group and have the same payment source, what you can do is you can make a selection of employees and you can uh, apply the same group in bulk by selecting it from the drop down at the bottom of the screen. Now, what you'll have noticed there is once you've uh, cr assigned a group and a payment source to each employee, uh, the submit, submit option becomes active in the bottom right hand corner. So that tells you that you are ready to submit. And you can see the information in the event column is we've got pension enrollments, We've also got pension contributions for those same three employees. So in order to send it through, you would click on that green submit button in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, you can also print a copy of this information using that print icon just above. And that is now being sent and being processed by the pension provider. And you'll see that you have an alert next to awaiting confirmation. So it's telling you the date and time uh, that that submission has been sent through. So it's asking you to check back here later for progress. You don't need to leave this screen open. Um, it will be processed in the background. And uh, just a tip, if you are with Nest and you've sent enrollment information, uh, it can take a couple of hours for that all to be processed, including the contributions. Uh, if you're on the same screen, you can refresh it by clicking on that refresh icon, as you've just seen in the demo. But again, it's still preparing the data, say to check back here later for progress. So you can close out of this screen. It all continues in the background without you having to do anything else. Now, if you wanna check on the progress to see if it has been processed, you can go back into that same send pension data option. And if it is still processing, you'll find pretty quickly that this message comes up that it's already exporting data to your provider and until it's complete, you can't start another one. So that's telling me that it hasn't quite finished processing. And again, you'd see the same information if you clicked waiting confirmation. So that was just over an hour later that we double check that one. So again, all you would do at this point is close out. And when it has been processed, you can go back into send pension data and again, it's connecting to the PDX service. And this is something that, that can typically take maybe up to a minute in some cases, it depends on the traffic um, going to, to and from that server and obviously the things that it's, it's having to do to communicate. But what we'll find once it has connected is that we now have some history of our submission. So it's showing us there um, one item in the history. And from here, you can put date filters in if you want to. We've only got the one submission in this example. So it tells you when it was sent. It's showing the enrollment information. So the names of the employees, the fact they've been enrolled. And if I scroll down, I've also got the contribution details that were included in that submission. So that history will always be available. So you can either access it through the send pension data option, or if you want to avoid the delay while it connects to the pension data exchange service, uh, you'll also find a similar option to view your pension history uh, from the online services um, tasks within your program. So um, that's the end of the demo, that is sending pension data. So you do your pension assessment and update the records first and then sending pension data was that post update task. So I have linked to the article um, specifically for Nest, um, but we do have a help center that covers the, the process, very similar process for the other two providers at Smart Pensions and the People's Pension. And uh, with that, I'm gonna pass you back to Alice, who's gonna finish off with some troubleshooting tips. So back to you, Alice. 
Thank you, Duncan, and thanks for that demonstration as well. So yes, the next section is just a short one, um, but I've put together some troubleshooting top tips that we would recommend if you do happen to come across any issues and you're not sure how to resolve them. So I've got a couple of popular ones in here. So first one is to check your process date in payroll. So the process date determines what pension information is pulled through into the Descend tab in Send Pension Data. For example, if your process date in payroll was back in May, but you're trying to submit June's pension data, you would need to make sure that your process date is also in June. Otherwise, it's not going to pull through any of June's data just yet. Second top tip is that if you're with NEST, you've got to make sure that your pension groups are set up to align to the tax periods. So I did touch on this before, but if they're not, you will need to create new groups. And if you're not sure how to do this on your pension portal, be sure to contact NEST, because if they don't align, you will likely get an error message. And that's basically because Sage 50 Payroll and NEST aren't quite aligning and communicating with each other 100% for, for PDX. Third top tip, this is to check and refresh the management centre. So that was where we went during the setup process. So as you now know, the management centre is where the pension provider details are pulled through and then fed back to Sage 50 payroll. So it's what connects them together. And if you're having trouble with sending pension data and you're not quite sure why, I would advise going to the management centre via the pensions module settings, refreshing it and seeing if any error messages come up. If they do, that's likely why you're having issues. Um, and as I showed you on the video earlier, if you hover over the error in the management centre, it comes up with what that error is and a next step on how to fix it as well. And last top tip for the day is relating to all of them, really. But if you do come across any error messages and you're not sure how to fix them, do make a note of that error message in full. So including any dates or numbers that it includes and you can search it on the help center. So we've got hundreds of fantastic help articles specifically on pensions alone, including error messages and pension provider specific ones as well. So you could search, for example, sending pension data with smart pensions and you'll get a whole load of search results um, and articles coming up covering that topic, which will talk you through the steps. Um, and same goes with error messages, too. We've also got a link at the bottom there for the Pension Data Exchange common questions. So if you're wanting to know a little bit more or you just got a couple of questions, see if they're on there um, and you do get a detailed answer for each of those. So do take note of these, or of course you can download the handout to keep, to keep the presentation slides as well, which has all of this information on. But that has brought us to the end of the webinar content this afternoon for the Pension Data Exchange. So with that being said, I would like to pass you back to Duncan, who's going to go through some more further support with you that we've got available. Thanks again, Alison, and thanks for those troubleshooting tips. So uh, we're nearly at the end of our allotted half an hour, but I just wanted to quickly run through some of the further support that we have available uh, for you guys. So in terms of webinars, this month has been very much pension focused. And um, as we get towards the end of June, we've got a couple of live sessions uh, still to go. So if you missed our pension calculations webinar, we're running that again uh, tomorrow. And uh, we have a session on pension re-enrolment on the 3rd of July. Uh, the earlier sessions are available as recordings and you'll find a link to all of our recordings from our website at sage.co.uk forward slash webinars. Another great source of information is our online help center, which can be accessed in your browser from sage.co.uk slash help or by clicking any of the help icons in your Sage software. We'd like to specifically call out our Pensions Data Exchange Hub, which we've linked to here on your handout at the bottom of the screen, as that does give you the guides for the three different pension providers. So that'll take you step by step through all the setup, uh, sending pension data, and also some useful troubleshooting tips. Uh, as well as that, you'll find contact details for our support team. So if you go into any of the topics you need help with, uh, you will find a get in touch link, which gives you the best way to contact our support team with that type of query. And another great resource, if you're not aware, is Sage University at sageu.com. Um, we do have available a range of training courses, certification and bite-sized learning for Sage 50 payroll and other Sage products. It's completely free to create your profile at sageu.com and our Sage 50 payroll courses are also free to access. So um, do check that out if you haven't already done so. 
and uh, you can fit that learning in at a time to suit you. Uh, but on behalf of myself and Alice, uh, we'd just like to thank you once again for joining us at the webinar today. I hope you found it useful and uh, maybe we'll see you on some of our remaining pensions webinars over the next few days. Goodbye for now. <laughs>